Welcome everyone to the 2019 College Basketball NCAA Selection Show here for the March Madness Tournament. I am your host, Mr. Octagonal from Octagonal Sports Network, and today we will be revealing the bracket for this year's tournament, so without further ado, let's end all the talk and let's see who's in. Starting in the East region, the number one overall seed is the Duke Blue Devils, led by Zion Williamson and company. They will be taking on either Fairly Dickinson or Gardner Webb. We'll see who wins that playing game. And then the number eight seed, Utah State Aggies, will be taking on the number nine seeded Syracuse Orange. Winner of that one will take on Duke or the winner of a playing game, most likely Duke. I'd be surprised if the Blue Devils don't make it out of that bracket. However, Let's see if someone like Utah State or Syracuse can lead an upset, especially the Qs, who know Duke quite well. Next up, we have the 5 seeded Iowa taking on the 12 seeded Florida Gators. Quite a low seed for the Gators, as usually they are one of the better teams in the country. However, they barely make it as a 12. Meanwhile, for the Cyclones, they're playing some really good ball right now. It is hard to beat them. And another team playing really good ball is the Auburn Tigers, who just won their conference championship. They'll be taking on New Mexico State. And do you smell an upset right there? I think the Aggies, just based on the way they've played all year, could very well win that game. And they could very well beat Iowa State or Florida and advance to the Sweet 16. The six-seeded Mississippi State Bulldogs will take on the winner of Arizona State and St. John's. Bulldogs have a lot of talent, solid season in the SEC, as the winner of that game will take on either Kansas or Georgia State. The Panthers have been Cinderella's before, winning upset games in the tournament, and they're taking on one of the biggest programs in college basketball history, the Jayhawks, led by coach Bill Self. Definitely not his best unit, but still a lot of talented players, led by junior forward Dedrick Lawson. Next up, we got the seven-seeded Wofford Terriers taking on the 10 seed Virginia Commonwealth University Rams. The Terriers have some great floor spacers, and I think that'll be a challenge for VCU's defense. And then number two, Kentucky taking on number 15, Montana. The Wildcats will be without P.J. Washington for the beginning of the tournament. However, I think they should be able to beat the Grizzlies. So it'll be East Region. In order of seedings is Duke, Kentucky, Kansas, Auburn, Iowa State, Mississippi State, Wofford, Utah State, Syracuse, VCU. Winner of Arizona State, St. John's, Florida, New Mexico State, Georgia State, Montana, and the winner of Gardner, Webb, and Fairleigh Dickinson. Next up, we will be looking at the South region as the number one seed is going to be the Virginia Cavaliers. They were the overall number one seed last year before losing to UMBC. They will be taking on the Iona Gales, trying to avenge last year's meme. And then number 8, Ole Miss, taking on number 9, Murray State. I would be a little bit surprised if the Murray State Racers do not get the win with them having super talented guard John ja Morant. And if we see Virginia playing Murray State, I'm curious to see if the Racers can pull off the upset. Number 5, Villanova, the reigning national champion, set to take on the number 12, St. Mary's Gales, who upset Gonzaga in the West Coast Conference uh, Championship. Villanova ended up winning the Big East regular season as well as the postseason. I feel like a 5 might be a little bit disrespectful, but we need to see these guys play against St. Mary's. And then we got the 4 seed. Kansas State Wildcats taking on the 13-seeded Liberty Flames. Dean Wade is out, which means Liberty could get the upset victory. The 6-seeded Cincinnati Bearcats will take on the 11-seeded Ohio State Buckeyes. Ohio State not as good as they usually are, sort of like the Florida Gators. However, they were able to sneak in on the tip of their tongues. Meanwhile, they will be taking on the Bearcats, who just upset Houston in the AAC Championship. And speaking of Houston, they are the three seed, taking on 14 seeded UC Irvine. I think UC Irvine, the Anteaters, could get an upset win. However, a Houston Cincinnati matchup in the second round, a rematch of the American Athletic Championship, would be very interesting. 
7th seed Nevada Wolfpack, led by the Martin Twins, will be taking on 10th seeded Minnesota. I think that's a pretty in evenly matched game, but I think Nevada has been there. They've done that, and I think they can get the win there. And then North Carolina, UNC, taking on Abilene Christian. I think Nevada could very well upset UNC in round two, assuming both those teams make it. Or we could always see a Virginia-UNC matchup in the Elite Eight and ACC matchup. Looking at the total South region, we have Virginia, North Carolina, Houston, Kansas State, Villanova, Cincinnati, Nevada, Ole Miss, Murray State, Minnesota, Ohio State, St. Mary's, Liberty, UC Irvine, Abilene Christian, and Iona. Next up, we have the Midwest region, and the number one seed will be the Gonzaga Bulldogs, who made the championship back in 2017. They will be taking on 16-seeded North Dakota State. Expect a nice win for the Bulldogs. And then the winner of that game will take on either the number eight seeded Seton Hall Pirates, led by flashy guard Miles Powell, or number nine, the Maryland Terrapins, led by the twin towers of sophomore Bruno Fernando and freshman Jalen Smith. I'm curious to see how much um, Brandon Clark, how limited he would be if Gonzaga ends up taking on Maryland. Number 5, Marquette, led by scoring sensation Marcus Howard, will be taking on the 12-seeded Oregon Ducks. I think that'll be a very interesting matchup. The Ducks playing good ball, just won the Pac-12 tournament. They have Lewis King, phenomenal freshman. Peyton Pritchard, good, experienced point guard. And then they will be taking on either LSU or Northeastern. Northeastern has some guys who can space the floor. And meanwhile, looking at LSU, they lost for Coach Will Wade. There's a lot of drama they lost Wade Sims, one of their teammates, earlier in the season as he got shot and unfortunately killed. So I think LSU sort of has a chip on their shoulder, and they could use that to their advantage. The number six seeded UCF Knights, led by the towering seven foot six Taco Fall. They will be taking on the 11 seeded Loyola Chicago Ramblers. The Ramblers made the Final Four as an 11 seed last year. Let's see if they can do it again this year. It's not going to be easy as one of their biggest strengths is rebounding, especially against teams that are smaller, and Taco Fall isn't particularly small, so I'm curious to see how the Ramblers will match up with them. The winner of that one will take on either the number three seeded Michigan Wolverines or the 14 seeded St. Louis Billikens, as Michigan made the national championship last year. However, they don't have Mo Wagner, they don't have Duncan Robinson, and it's definitely not going to be as easy for them. Number 7 seeded Buffalo Bulls will be taking on the 10 seeded Baylor Bears. Buffalo's been consistently good this season in the MAC after beating the 4 seeded Arizona in last year's tournament, led by eventual number one overall pick DeAndre Ayton. Meanwhile, for Baylor, uh, they've not had a great season. However, they've sort of stringed together as of late, and I'm very curious to see who wins that game. They'll be taking on either Texas Tech or Colgate. Texas Tech, led by Jarrett Culver, a legit superstar, has some guys who can space the floor around him. So we're going to have a full mis Midwest region. We have Gonzaga, Texas Tech, Michigan, LSU, Marquette, UCF, Buffalo, Seton Hall, Maryland, Baylor, Loyola, Chicago, Oregon, Northeastern, St. Louis, Colgate, and North Dakota State. And in the last but not least, we have the West region, led by the number one overall seed, Michigan State Spartans. Tough choice for the committee between them and the UNC Tar Heels. However, they're going to give it to the Spartans, who ended up winning the Big 12 Conference Championship over Michigan. They'll be taking on the winner of Prairie View A&M and North Carolina Central. So I'd expect Michigan to win that one. And then the number 8-seeded Washington Huskies will be taking on the number 9-seeded Louisville Cardinals. A player I really like is Matisse Tybul from the Huskies. Very good on defense. Not much of an offensive player. But if he can stop Louisville's offense, I think Washington can get the win in that game. The number 5 seed Virginia Tech Hokey Pokies will be taking on the 12 seeded Yale Bulldogs. If this was a math competition, I'd put my money on Yale. However, Nikhil Alexander-Walker and Virginia Tech, they have plenty of guards, plenty of talent on the perimeter. 
and I'm probably going to pick the Hokey Pokies to win that game. And then the number four seeded Purdue, led by scoring sensation Carson Edwards. They have some other good supporting pieces like Ryan Klein, who has shown some flashes from time to time. They'll be taking on the Monarchs from Old Dominion. So I think a Purdue-Virginia Tech matchup in round two, if neither of those teams get upset, could be very interesting with the amount of guard talent they have. Number six, Wisconsin, led by senior Ian Happ, will be taking on the winner of Belmont and Temple. Belmont is a very sexy upset pick, and if they end up beating the Temple Owls, I could very well see them beating Wisconsin as well. And then number three, Florida State, taking on number 14, Northern Kentucky. Florida State has a lot of lawn athletes, guys like Trent Forrest, Terrence Mann, and I think Florida State will either do really good or really bad. The number 7 seeded Iowa Hawkeyes will be taking on the number 10 seeded Oklahoma Sooners. The Sooners pretty much were as good this year as they were last year, even though they had Trey Young, who is, the be who is probably the most dominant player in college basketball a season or go. Or maybe not the most dominant, but... Definitely one of, if not the best in the country. And then Tennessee, a number two seed led by Admiral Schofield, Grant Williams. They have a number of talented players. They're going to be taking on the 15-seeded Vermont Catamounts. I think 15 was a little bit harsh for Vermont. So looking at the full, the full West region, we have Michigan State, Tennessee, Florida State, Purdue, Virginia Tech, Wisconsin, Iowa, Washington, Louisville, Oklahoma, the winner of Belmont and Temple, Yale, Old Dominion, Northern Kentucky, uh, Vermont, and then the winner of Prairie View A&M and North Carolina Central. Your one seeds we have for the East Region, Duke, the South Region, Virginia, the Midwest Region, Gonzaga, and the West Region, Michigan State. That'll do it for Selection Saturday. Who do you all think will win the tournament? Who are you picking in your brackets what are your upset picks looking like? And as always, have a good one. I'm a Bobby girl in the Bobby world. Loving plastic. It's fantastic. You can brush my hair. I'll dress me everywhere. Imagination. Life is your creation. Hey, hey, man.